Hi friends, welcome to this class. Today we are going to be exploring shifting perspective. You will need one block, so please go and find yourself a block or something that can replicate it. And when you're ready, meet me in your practice space. To start our practice today, we are going to find a gentle supported bridge position. So lift the hips up and place that block on its lowest setting underneath the sacrum. I prefer the lowest setting and if you want an additional height, just add another block on top. That way you get a really nice firm base of support underneath you. And then once you arrive, the invitation for our class today is going to be shifting perspective. So I'm going to ask you to call into this moment, to call into your heart, anything that feels like it might be gripping you a little bit tightly, something that perhaps you feel as if there is no longer any momentum or traction. Maybe it is a feeling of being stuck or hung up or dragged by the weight of whatever this is. Let it be held within the steady and consistent beating of your heart. Is there a layer of emotionality to it? Is there physical sensation? Is there a sense of catching in your breath? A density or a weight to it? Does it feel heavy? Does it feel light? What is the textural quality of it? Let this be an opportunity to meet all of it without feeling as if you have to fix it or solve it or troubleshoot it. Just let it be felt and let it be here. Hang up any extra baggage or weight that you might be carrying and just allow yourself to rest in this moment in your body with your breath. Let the right knee gently float up in towards your chest and take the hands around your shin as you gently let the arms, the weight of the arms, pull the knee in tighter to your chest. You could keep the left knee grounded or you could extend the left heel up towards the top line of your mat and really let that heel anchor down, feeling a big, beautiful opening into the front left thigh. And if you enjoy a few little wriggles to get yourself situated into a shape, then I, of course, always invite you to explore. But in this practice, there might be some beautiful moments where we invite stillness in as a means of gaining a new perspective, of seeing things through perhaps a new lens, by resting in moments of pause and of stillness. And it is through steady unwavering patience that we find a deeper sense of clarity and perhaps maybe a new perspective if you extended that left leg out go ahead and draw it back in and underneath you and we're going to find a half happy baby shape with that right leg don't worry if you can't grab the outer blade side edge of the foot just grab a hold of the calf instead if that feels more spacious and then take your right ankle and gently place it on top of the left knee. Encourage the right knee to just drip down towards the floor as you find this little figure four shape and open through the hips. And you're going to let the left leg float off as you just stack the knees above the hips, finding this gentle inversion. Allow yourself just to receive and allow. You're going to unwind the legs. Just let them come into the chest and then switch your knees so left knee comes in towards you sole of the right foot places down and you just hug the left knee closer to your chest with each breath you could also play with extending the right foot out to the top line of your mat finding a more opening sensation into the front of the right thigh let your exhale just gently drip that left knee in a little bit closer to your chest and you can welcome in some gentle movements here if that feels really good to you 
Let the breathing be effortless and slow. Let this connection to your breath offer up a new perspective. Place the sole of the right foot back down, knee points to the sky, and then come back and find that little half happy baby shape grabbing a hold of the outer left ankle. Your left heel will then again place on top of the right knee as you find that figure four shape with the legs. The right foot will gently hover as you pull the knees closer towards you. Letting yourself find more of a inversion shape, elevating the hips above the heart, allowing the lower body to just gently drain now just release both of your legs and invitation here to send them both out long to the top of your mat find a spaciousness within the entire front seam of your body and see if you can soften a little bit more with each exhale knees will once again draw up into the chest this time extend the feet right the way up into the sky straightening up through the backs of your kneecaps to the best of your ability let the hands just intuitively place on the body welcome in any new insights any new perspective perhaps it's just in your ability to become a little bit more present with your breath and then let the feet land, press through the heels to lift the hips, remove that block out from underneath you. And gently just start windshield wipering the knees side to side, feeling as the pelvis makes contact with the earth beneath you once again. Hug the knees in towards the chest and then elevate the shoulders up and away from your mat, finding this low boat pose as you extend the toes forward to the front of your mat. And then hug the knees in tight as you rise to a seat, roll over the shins and step back into a tabletop position. And as you arrive in your tabletop position, press through the palms Take an inhale, soften the belly down, lift the gaze. Exhale, round chin to chest, tailbone tucks under. Finding some gentle cat cows here in your own timing with your own breath. Letting the spine move. Letting yourself find a more upright position, bearing weight into the hands. Welcome in a new perspective as you become more present with each breath. Tuck the toes underneath you. When you're ready, float the knees and lift the hips up. Find downward facing dog. Come high to the toes as you ripple forward, finding high plank pose. And then flick the tailbone back behind you as you send the hips up and back into your downward facing dog. Inhale to ripple forward, high plank pose. And exhale to send it back, downward facing dog. Inhale to undulate your spine forward and exhale to send yourself back downward facing dog and then take a inhale a lift to the tips of your toes send the knees towards the left ground through the outer edges of the feet and then start to bend softly into the knees get lighter into the right hand maybe it even reaches up towards the sky as you find this really fluid vashistasana sink the hips back as you inhale and then as you exhale cactus the arms spring yourself forward inhale to sink the hips back bend the knees and exhale cactus the arm one more time inhale to bend the knees send the hips back and exhale spring forward cactus the arm open right hand grounds down you send yourself back downward facing dog inhale high to the toes drop the heels towards the right this time grounding the feet bend the knees deeply get lighter into the left fingertips maybe eventually those left fingertips lift up and you find that vashistasana 
Take a bend into the knees, sink the hips back, cactus the arm as you spring forward. Inhale, sink the hips back, bend the knees, and exhale, drive forward. Inhale. Exhale. Place the left hand back down, downward facing dog. Inhale, ripple forward, find a high plank pose. Exhale, bend the elbows, lower all the way to your belly. Take an inhale as you lift the chest and heart up. And then exhale, send yourself back into your downward facing dog. Take an inhale, lift high to the toes. Send the heels towards the left. Find that Vashistasana. Bend the knees and straighten. Right hand places down. This time you drop down onto the right forearm. Shift the heels over towards the right and start to get lighter into the left fingertips. They could stay down or you could reach left fingertips up to the sky, finding a forearm side plank. Your left forearm will come to meet the right. You find a forearm plank pose. As you exhale, deliver the hips down, find sphinx, unplug the toes back behind you, lift the chest and heart, draw the hands back in line with the ribs, and then from there, get light into the fingertips, float the palms, reach them forward to the front of the mat, and then bend the elbows and cactus, heart stays lifted. Hands plant down, you send the hips back, downward facing dog. Take an inhale, come high to the toes, heels drop over towards the right, Bend into the knees, get light into left fingertips, reach them up to the sky, find Vashistasana. Keep it buoyant and soft. Take an inhale, and then as you exhale, left forearm meets the earth. Shift the heels towards the left. Get light into the right fingertips. They could stay down for support, or you could float it up to the sky, finding a forearm side plank. Another inhale here. Exhale, deliver right forearm down, find your forearm plank. Take an inhale and then exhale, deliver pelvis to the ground. Lift the chest and heart for sphinx and then glide the hands back in line with the ribs. Take an inhale, press through the palms, lift the chest and heart and then exhale, drip the heart back down. Press into the palms to send yourself back into a child's pose this time. Allow a gentle rounding, a gentle fold. And then inhale when you're ready to come back and up into your downward facing dog. Send the gaze back in between the thighs here. Flip your perspective and take an inhale, ripple forward, find a high plank pose. And then from here, keep the shoulders over the wrist as you tiptoe your toes all the way up to the top of your mat to take a forward fold. Interlace the hands for opposite elbow. Allow the torso to be really heavy here. And take your gaze back in between the legs if possible and just perceive the world from this upside down lens. Take an inhale, find a halfway lift, and then exhale, pull down and fold. Send your gaze back towards the back of the room. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, pull down and fold in. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, pull crown of head down, fold. Take your gaze back, flipping perspective 180 degrees. Deep bend to the knees here to really allow the upper torso to hang over the legs. Let the neck be soft and loose. Let your breathing be easy and slow. Welcome in a new perspective. And with that perspective, deep bend into the knees to journey up all the way into Urdhva Hastasana. Arms reach up at the top. Hands pull to the heart as you stay standing, Tadasana. And as you rise into the standing position, bringing yourself upright, Open the eyes and take your gaze into the room. Notice what is sharing the space with you. Notice the lens by which you are looking out of. Your perception, your perspective, your unique lens. Bend the knees deeply and sit into your Utkatasana, your chair pose. Have the gaze directed up between the hands here. Really let yourself sit in and take in the world around you. And then flip that perspective 180 degrees as you fold over the legs and take your gaze back in between the thighs if possible. And then from here, hands plant, step the left foot back, find a nice low and long runner's lunge. You could stay on the hands, explore space, or you could drop down into the forearms and explore the space there. Let yourself move around, feel into the body, sense into this shape, sense into the perspective that this shape is offering up to you. 
rise onto the hands. Keep the left hand down as you reach right fingertips to the sky, take a twist. Take a deep breath in here. And then as you exhale, thread the right hand through as you heel toe your feet wide, finding a wide-legged forward fold first facing the long side edge of your mat. Hands could be under the shoulders, your hands could be on blocks or to the floor. Wherever you are, see if you can take your gaze back behind you, again viewing the world through this upside down lens, flipping your perspective 180 degrees. Allow there to be a softening in your torso and your upper body, plugging your hips into the heavens, crown hanging to the earth. And then bend into the back left knee, find your skandhasana. Allow yourself to dive into the pelvis here, upright your chest. Take your gaze forward, dig in with the right heel, pull yourself forward this time into a high horizon lunge, spinning onto the blade side edges of your feet, left hand down, right hand to the sky. Take an inhale, bridge the hips up, reach right fingertips forward and then exhale, sink the hips down as you reach the right hand for the back of the room. Inhale to lift up through the hips, breathe through the side seam of your body and exhale to sink it down, take the gaze back. Inhale, lift up, get long, and exhale, sink down, get low. Lift the hips back up, this time plug down firmly into left hand and left foot as you draw the right knee in towards your chest, finding your side plank. Right foot could step down on top of the left. We're all gonna eventually drop the right forearm down to the earth, heels will drop over to the right, get lighter into the left hand, maybe you find a side plank on your right forearm, left hand to the sky. Take a deep breath in, exhale, let the left forearm drop down, find your forearm plank pose, and then start to tiptoe your feet up towards your elbows as you find dolphin pose. Send your gaze back in between the thighs, let your hands press down firmly as you lift the crown of the head away and then press into the palms to find your downward facing dog. Optional vinyasa here, or if you would prefer to just stay in your downward facing dog, stay in your downward facing dog, enjoying any subtle movements that feel re-nourishing and stabilizing for you. From your downward facing dog, reach your right toes up to the sky. As you exhale, draw the knee in towards the chest, find your tiger curl, and then set the foot down to the top of your mat. Place the back knee down, reach the hands up and overhead as you find Anjaneyasana, your low lunge. Reach the palms up and over here, join the palms together, and then bend the elbow so the thumbs chase the nape of the neck. And then lean the head back into the hands as you open the heart. Exhale to straighten the right leg, hands come down, half splits out of Hanuman. Take an inhale, re-bend, find Anjane Asana. Exhale, thumbs to the nape of the neck, bend the elbows. Inhale to lean into the space back behind you, open the chest. Exhale, send it back, Adha Hanumanasana. Inhale to re-bend, arms reach up, inhale. Exhale, bend the elbows, thumbs to the nape of the neck. Inhale to expand the chest and heart. This time, as you exhale, option to bend the back knee, let the toes chase the thumbs. And then release, find your Adha Hanumanasana half splits. From your half splits, you're welcome to stay here or you could extend this shape out finding your version of full Hanumanasana. Just any degree of extension into this shape that allows you to strum up against the hamstrings a little bit more, stabilize in your breath. You could invite intuitive movements in here or just find stillness. When you're ready, draw the heel back and underneath you, refind your lunge and then tuck the back toe and lift the back knee finding your high crescent. Take an inhale here, and then as you exhale, lean forward, hands to heart center as you shift your weight into the front right foot and glide up into your warrior three. See if you can start to lift the left toes even higher, and then bend the knees, draw the left knee up and into your chest as you rise to stand into your one-legged stalk. Open the left knee out towards the left, and then place the sole of your foot down to the inside of the right leg, finding tree pose. From here, hands could be to heart center, or you could reach the hands up and over the head, bend the elbows and let the hands catch the back of the head, and then lean into that space back behind you, lifting your gaze up, welcoming a new perspective. 
Allow the hands to come back to the heart center. Draw the knee back in towards the chest and extend the left leg forward. Pendulum swing it through as you refind your warrior three. Find that little lift through the back line of the body. And then you're gonna to start to bend the right knee a little bit more as you start to soften your heart down towards your mat. Left heel lifts up higher, almost like you're moving like a pendulum. When you're ready, hands place down and you find your standing splits. Left toes reach higher to the sky. Crown of the head pours down. Hands come underneath the shoulders. Lift high to the tips of your right toes and then start to take some little handstand hops here. Maybe you catch some hang time, you play with your handstand, your Adha Mukha Vrikshasana, welcoming in a new perspective as you plug the toes up to the heavens and send the crown of the head down to the earth. When you're ready, both feet placed down, you find a forward fold to the top of the mat. Bend into the knees deeply to unravel the spine, come all the way up to standing. Arms reach up, gaze to the thumbs and then hands to heart center as you stand in your Tadasana. Sit the hips down low, chair pose, take the gaze up. Flip your perspective 180 degrees as you then straighten the legs and fold, send your gaze back towards the back of the room. Take an inhale, find a halfway lift, lengthen through your spine. And then as you exhale, hands plant down, step the right toes to the back of your mat. Find your runner's lunge. You could stay lifted onto the hands here, or you could drop down onto the forearms. Welcome in some inquisitive and curious movement here, shifting space through the hips. Stay buoyant into the back of the body though, so don't let the head crowd down. Can you instead keep the back of your skull really nice and lifted? Hands walk back underneath the shoulders and then you reach left hand to the sky, finding your twist in your runner's lunge. Take a deep breath in here and then as you exhale, left hand threads through as you walk yourself around, wide-legged forward fold. And really start to pull crown of the head down towards the earth as you fold. You could widen the feet to allow that to happen. Hands are going to place out in front of the face so you create tripods with your hands and with the crown of your head. And then from here, you're welcome to explore floating the toes off and finding your tripod headstand. If you have a traditional headstand you'd rather play with, feel free, go for it. Any other inversion is welcome here as well. Otherwise, just stay in your wide-legged forward fold and enjoy that space. Give yourself a moment to play and explore. You could take this into a headstand in tree pose, placing each foot to the inside of the leg alternatively. When we are ready, you'll place the feet back down. Refind that wide-legged forward fold. Take an inhale, find a halfway lift. And then exhale, sit down into your skandhasana into the back right knee. Right toes peel out slightly. Knee is nice and wide. Let yourself soften into the pelvis, uprighting the chest. Dig in with your left heel. And then when you're ready, pull forward, this time into your high horizon lunge. Right hand down, spin onto the blade side edges of the feet. Sink the hips down, reach the left hand back. And then inhale to open up, reach the left hand overhead. Sit down, gaze goes back. Lift the hips up, broaden across the side of your waist. Sit the hips down and lift them back up. This time you're going to press firmly into right hand, right foot to step the left leg on top of the right Vashistasana. Take a deep breath in here and then exhale. Your left forearm will come down onto your mat, place it down. Shift the heels over towards the left as you get lighter into right fingertips. Maybe they float off and you find your forearm side plank on the left arm. One more inhale. Exhale, right forearm joins down. You find your forearm plank pose. Lengthen here. And then start to creep those toes in towards your elbows as you shift the gaze back in between the legs. And then from here, you're welcome to play with extending the right toes up to the sky and then taking some little hops off the left, left toes, finding your forearm balance or your pincher. Play with a few hops there and then switch out your legs, left leg to the sky. Take those little hops off the right foot. Mm -hmm. 
the foot places back down. Press through the palms to lift up into your downward facing dog. And then another option to go through a vinyasa here if you would like it, or again, anything that feels stabilizing for you. When you're ready, you can allow yourself to rest in a child's pose. Allow this to be a moment of reacclimating to your breath, re-nourishing yourself. When you're ready, lift the hips back up and find downward facing dog. Left leg reaches to the sky. You draw the knee in towards the chest, tiger curl, and then set the foot down in between the hands. Find your Anjane Asana. Hands reach up to the sky, palms together. Bend the elbows, thumbs to the nape of the neck. Exhale, and then inhale to lean back, open the heart. Exhale to close off, Ardha Hanuman, your half splits. Inhale, re-bend, Anjane Asana. Exhale, bend elbows, thumbs to the nape of the neck. Inhale to lean back, open up. Exhale, Ardha Hanumanasana, straighten and fold. Inhale to re-bend, arms reach up. Exhale, thumbs to the nape of the neck. Inhale to open up, reach the fingertips back. Option to bend the back knee as the toes chase the fingers, the fingers chase the toes. Maybe you can even grab a bind there. And then when you're ready, exhale, release. Ardha Hanumanasana or any extension of the shape taking it into your full splits. Remember your full splits doesn't have to look like your hips fully down onto the floor. You could have blocks under the hands. It could just be slightly more extended than your half splits. Find any sensation that allows you just to drop in and find deeper witnessing. Draw the left heel back in and underneath you. Refind your low lunge so you can lift the back knee, find a high crescent. Take an inhale here. Exhale, hands to the heart, shift your weight forward, and then fly into your warrior three. Feel a lift through the back body. Soft bend into the left knee to draw yourself to standing. Right knee hugs into the chest. And then you take that right knee out to the right. Place the sole of the foot down to the inside of the left leg, pressing the left thigh equally into the sole of your right foot as you find tree pose. You could stay hands to heart, or you could reach the hands up and overhead. Bend the elbows, let the elbows be wide as you lean the back of the skull into the hands and take your gaze up somewhere new. Welcome in a new perspective. Take another inhale there. And then exhale to gently release. Right knee turns back forward. Extend the leg out behind you. Find warrior three. And then from here, as the right toes lift further up towards the sky, let your heart descend down as you find this floating, flying splits. When you're ready, hands can release down as you find a more supportive standing splits variation. And then from here, plugging the hands underneath the shoulders, straightening and lengthening out through your elbows and playing with some little handstand hops. Maybe you catch some hang time in your handstand and enjoy it that opportunity to welcome in a new perspective, even if there are wobbles, even if there are shakes, even if you fall out, how can you shift your perspective here? See your failures as your deepest opening, your times that you stumble and fall as the beautiful lessons that you're meant to learn in this life, an opportunity to laugh at yourself and grow when you're ready, forward folds to the top of your mat. Bend the knees to rise up. Find Urdhva Hastasana, reach up through the hands. Exhale, hands to heart, stay standing. Sometimes when we feel stuck or confused, it can be common for us to want to do more in order to seek out answers or greater clarity. But your greatest power is your ability to connect into self to come to this place of deep stillness and witnessing and through patience clarity will arise when you're ready find a forward fold let yourself gaze down and in sending your gaze back behind you another opportunity here to move through a vinyasa if you would like to take it otherwise we will all meet in a gentle child's pose
when you're ready, join me in a seat in your shins. We're going to have a little play with our forearm balance and our pincher. What I want you to think about with this is a active hugging of the elbows in towards one another. You can interlace the hands as well to create more of a firm base. You can also use the block in between the palms. You're actively pressing the sides of the block with the palms of the hands. But I want you to really think about drawing the elbows together so the elbows don't wing out wide. You're gonna place the arms down onto your mat, tuck your toes and lift your hips up so you find dolphin pose. And then start to tiptoe your feet up towards your elbows as much as you can, lifting the hips above the shoulders. You're gonna play with just transferring weight into the toes and then sending the heels back, really feeling that shift of the hips over the shoulders. And then when you're ready, reach right toes to the sky and maybe you find a hop or maybe you can even sense into a gentle float of the left toes off as you find your forearm balance or your pincher. And if the toes are still down and you're just continuing to transfer weight, know that there is so much work and strength cultivating there. You don't have to fly to find that same effort, that same work. Just be wherever you need to be to find this little shift. Let yourself come back down into a Vajrasana when you're ready. Upright the torso. And we'll find another round of our pincher when you are ready. Placing the hands, you could use the same grip as last time or play with a slightly different one. This time, lift the left toes up to the sky and practice transferring the weight off the right toes. You want to come high to the very tips of the toes as you allow that shift of the weight to happen. You're essentially trying to take the hips above and maybe even slightly past the shoulders so you can allow the toes to just gently float up. And then just play and explore wherever you are for however long you would like to. When you're ready, you can meet me in a seat in Vajrasana. Bringing the head above the hips. And if there's any energy you need to disperse, allow the arms to shake and bring a little bounce to the hips. Notice any new unfoldings, any welcoming in of a new perspective. When you're ready, you're going to shift over onto your hips. Either take a Sukhasana or Agni Stambhasana, right shin in front or right shin on top. Paralleling the shins, flexing the ankles. You could stay upright or you could fold. Let the breath travel into the back of the lungs, the kidney band, the entire back body inflating with breath. Let the torso be soft. When you're ready, you're gonna rise up. Take that right foot around so that the knee comes to the inside of the sole of the left foot and then twist towards the left leg as you drop the forearms down, taking this dare twist. Let your breath start to gently slow. It doesn't have to be forced or super deep. Just let it be intimate and connected. Rise back up, release the right leg in front of you, sole of the left foot to the inside of the right leg, and then take a fold in your Janushashasana. Let the neck hang loose, relax your jaw, let steady breaths come into the belly. Rise back up into a seat. You're gonna take the top of the left foot down, knees together, foot is to the outside of the left hip. You could stay up right here if this is a lot or you could start to descend down and back. Maybe you can even bring your entire back body onto the floor. If you need more, you can hug the right knee in towards your chest. Finding this reclined hero's pose. Feel the contact that you make with the earth beneath you. Let your exhale soften you into that space more.
rise up into a seat once again shifting the cross of the knees this time either left shin in front for sukhasana or left shin on top for agni stambhasana your fire log Inhale to rise back up, release the left leg, send it back behind you so that the left knee comes to the inside of the sole of the right foot and then walk yourself around to your right thigh, drop down onto forearms or just walk the hands out long in front of you as you find this dare twist. Slowing everything down. Welcoming in this softer state of being. Opening up more room for stillness. When you're ready, you're gonna rise up. Extend the left leg out in front of you, sole of the right foot to the inside of the left leg. Fold over and find Janushashasana. rise up when you're ready you're going to take the top of the right foot down outside of the right hip and let yourself gently descend into that half hero's pose again you could do all of this seated upright if you're feeling that stretch into the front of your right quad then that is the perfect place to be remember as long as you are breathing freely and easily then you are in the shape it doesn't matter what it looks like can you prioritize how it feels? Allow it to open up more space in your mind. Let it land you deeply to that space within you that is always at peace, always at rest. The home of your presence. The home of your clearest vision. You're gonna release the legs and you're gonna just meet me on your backs. We're gonna find a waterfall, so legs extended up to the sky, hands placed intuitively onto the body or hands placed down by your sides. And if you would like a little bit more, you can re-find that block underneath the pelvis, right on that bony part of your sacrum and extend the legs up to the sky as you find this gentle waterfall. Arms could also extend up towards the sky as you let the blood drain from the extremities, replenishing your vital organs, your heart. Let yourself receive here now, grounded into heaven, into consciousness, into spirit, and receiving all of that sacred knowledge that lies within. Whenever you feel ready, allow this to gently soften. You can bend the knees and bring the hands to the heart. When you're ready to release down, you'll remove that block out from underneath you and take any shape of rest that is calling to you in this moment. Shavasana, legs out wide, arms out wide. Supta Baddha Konasana. A constructive rest. Let yourself land in any position that feels like a place you can anchor in, a place where you can allow the softening, the surrender, and the letting go. Sometimes the welcoming of a new perspective takes time and patience. Sometimes when things are not working in the way that we would hope or the way that we originally planned, 
where if things aren't moving along at all, if we feel stagnant and stuck. Sometimes these moments offer us up a opportunity to pause. It's this moment of metamorphosis when the caterpillar wraps itself up in a cocoon. What can appear to be stagnation or stillness or stuckness or being hung up on something is actually a beautiful invitation to presence, stillness, and witnessing. In these moments where we allow ourselves to kindly and gently navigate these moments of perhaps stagnation or uncertainty with kindness and care, these moments can be the ultimate catalyst for transformation when we allow ourselves to be present with what is, when we allow ourselves patience for clarity to find us. And if you are experiencing a moment of stagnation or of feeling stuck, maybe you can use this as an invitation to find more stillness, to come back home to yourself, to deeply root in that place within you that is always at rest and always at peace. And through anchoring into that place, into the home of your greatest strength, your presence, your witnessing, clarity will soon come. But just be patient, my love. Let yourself take your time in this journey. As you start to arise from your chrysalis to close out from this cocoon of transformation and metamorphosis, allow any little movements to re-infiltrate back into your body. This could look like stretches, could look like body sweeps, could look like gentle body massage. Shift yourself into a fetal position on one side of your body. Taking this shape of rebirth, allowing any new perspective to gently unfold and take shape. And when you feel yourself wanting to rise, let yourself come up with more clarity, more patience, more kindness for yourself. Take a deep breath in with me. Inhale. And exhale. Give yourself so much gratitude and thanks. Be patient with yourself, my love. Once you emerge from this cocoon, you will not be the same. Take time with this version of yourself. Sending you so much love and so much gratitude until we're able to do this again next time peace thank you my loves if you enjoyed this flow I would love it if you could support me by subscribing liking commenting sharing any insights or new perspectives that came through on this journey Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Peace and love to you all.